We shall walk about this passage as the Holy Spirit directs. But I want to call your attention to the ninth verse of this third chapter of First Samuel. Here is what it says. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down. And it shall be if he calls you that you must say speak Lord for your servant is so Samuel went and lay down in the place for years now I have been praying the prayer when I stand to preach the gospel. Speak, Lord. We're listening. Today, God has led me to not only pray the prayer, but to say a word smartly about where this line came from, what it meant then, and what it means to us today. Both there and our times when God is silent. There are times when God is silent. There is never a time that God is not present. For well, I know that you know that he is an everywhere God. We can witness with the psalmist that if we fly to the very highest heights of the heavens, he's right there. And if as we walk upon our tedious journey, we stumble and fall to the lowest depths of shallow, he's there. I wonder are there any witnesses this morning that when you were on your mountain top of joy, God was right there. And I'm sure that someone other than me can attest this morning that when I walk through my most difficult valleys, he was right there. Friends, God is always present. But sometimes he is silent. In this beginning line of this third chapter of 1 Samuel is a far cry from where the chapter will end. It begins with these words in verse 1. Now, the boy, Samuel, ministered to the Lord before Eli in this B section. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. And there was no widespread revelation. The New Revised Translation has it to read that the word of the Lord was rare and there were no visions. Amos 
later would talk about a time and a day would come when there would be a famine in the land. Amos declared that it would not be a famine of bread and one where folks were thirsty. But Amos said that there would come a time when there would be a famine in the land for the word of Almighty God. Right. That people would run from sea to sea looking for the word of God. And that they would run from the north to the east looking for the word of God. But they would not fight it. Folks, it's one thing to look for bread and water and can't find it. But it's another thing altogether to need a word from God and cannot hear a word from on high. I am convinced that the reason there is so much trouble in our world for all of God's children today is that the word of the Lord has once again become rare. All right. All right. The reason is because preachers and I can talk about preachers because I'm one. Amen. Preachers have fallen down Amen. on the, their responsibility to preach the word of God as he has called them to preach it. Amen. One of the reasons I believe that there is this terrible disconnect between God and his people is that we have too many Eli's in the pulpit today. Eli. The word said concerning him that his eyesight was growing dim. And there is a direct connection here between Eli's physical failing because of the natural aging process. Amen. We need to pause here to admit something, folks, that we're on our way out, you know. Amen. I know some of us are so glamorous and, and, and so handsome and we're looking so good and, and then all that's good, but folks, uh, you won't look tomorrow in your life like you're looking right now. It was just a few years ago. And I'm glad to have Mr. Green from my hometown and from the sister church on my charge, home charge in Lake City. I want to go back for a moment and say it seemed like but yesterday when my mama would call to me as she was sewing and needed to put thread in the needle. She would call out unto me and, and say, son, come and thread this needle for me. And I took pride in the fact that I could take that number eight thread and run it through my lips and take that needle and pierce the eye of that needle in one smooth stroke. That was then. Lord, help me here. You, you, you see, I, I can't do that anymore. And in addition to that, the South Carolina Department of Motor Division says that unless I have these trifocals on my eyes when I'm operating a vehicle, I am breaking the law. Am I making sense to you? Don't get the big head because you're young and pretty and handsome 
that blooms today, tomorrow shall be dying. Oh, my sister. Oh, my brother. You may be a beautiful budding rose right now. Almighty quiet on that. Let me translate. 